In the most basic form, Web 3.0 is the next major evolution of the web. But that being said, there is no foundation or governing entity ensuring a set of specifications or anything like that. Web 3 is basically a loose definition encapsulating a collection of trends involving the web. It's not like HTML5 where the W3C defines an exact set of specifications. To understand Web3 better and what it means to you as a consumer or a software engineer, let's first start by taking a quick look at Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. Web 1 is basically the early days of the internet. For those that are old enough, you will remember how a website used to be in the 90s and the early 2000s, mostly static content that you consumed. If you're young and have no clue how those sites look like, go to the Wayback Machine and search for popular websites to see how they were in the 90s and 2000s. But to summarize, in the Web 1 world, websites had no interactivity. They were basically read-only and the users were just consumers. The main problem with that version of the web was that creating your own web page and contributing to the version of the web took a considerable amount of technological knowledge. Then came Web 2.0, which is the version we currently use. If one was read-only, Web2 essentially made it read and write. This was mainly due to the arrival of social networks, MySpace, High Five, and eventually big guns like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The big change in Web2 was that it was based around content that the users generated. So as a consumer, instead of passively consuming content published by companies, you were dealing with dynamic content generated and shared by the consumers themselves. Whether that meant sharing micro updates in Twitter or posting videos on YouTube or selling and buying stuff in an online marketplace like eBay. This meant that content creation was possible even without much technological knowledge. While this is generally a good thing, the problem is that the companies that own the platforms generally also own the data created by the users. They also take the data and use it to figure out consumption metrics, identify user trends, and monetize that by selling it to advertisers for targeted advertising. In this version of the web, users are not just consumers, they're also the product, especially when thinking of ad revenue their content generates for these companies. And this brings us to Web 3.0, which aims to solve some issues that Web 2 had and to improve upon some other things that it does great. The term Web 3.0 was originally used in 2014 by Ethereum creator Gavin Wood in a post on his blog titled Insights to a Modern World, where he described it as a new decentralized iteration of the web that runs on blockchain, which is an immutable ledger system used by cryptocurrencies to keep track of transactions. Web3 revolves around three fundamental pillars content ownership, privacy, and democracy. When you use a platform like Facebook or YouTube, your data is collected, owned, and monetized by these companies. The idea in Web3 is that you own your own data within your wallet and engage with other applications and users through your wallet. And since you own your data, you will be able to monetize it yourself as well. Since you use your wallet, you also get privacy with it. The idea is that your wallet is your identity and it isn't linked to your real identity. You log in with your wallet, interact with apps and users, and then take your data with you when you log out. So even though someone may be able to see your activity, all they know is that the activity is from your wallet. They have no clue that you actually own the wallet. It's like having a permanent VPN. This is probably the biggest concept in Web3. The idea that instead of major companies owning their apps and networks, they will instead be run by decentralized autonomous organizations, also referred to as DAOs. These organizations will be composed of users themselves who possess governance tokens. In essence, users get to make decisions to change rules and regulations, when to ban users, and other choices would be voted on by the users of the decentralized service instead of decided unilaterally by the company that owns a website. This would take the power out of the hands of big tech companies and place it in the hands of the users. So this is all great, but could there be potential downsides to a private decentralized internet where users own their data? Well, the main issue with Web3 is, in fact, its decentralized nature. As I previously mentioned, decentralized autonomous organizations will govern this version of the web. But who gets to be part of these organizations? The simple answer is whoever possesses governance tokens. And you may be thinking, well, how do you get these tokens? Well, the basic idea is that you either earn them based on participation or they can be bought and sold. 
The latter is the potential problem. Since they can be sold and bought, there's nothing stopping one entity from buying up all the available tokens of a given platform, giving them the majority of the decision-making power. This means that decision-making power can be greatly skewed towards the ones who can actually afford it. Further inequality issues can also arise with proof of stake, Web 3.0's consensus mechanism that validates updates to the blockchain. Proof of stake has validators stake cryptocurrency that they already own as collateral when updating new information to the blockchain. The more crypto you stake, the greater chance you have to update the blockchain and earn more currency as a reward. This means that the validators with the most money can keep getting richer. In addition to that, the decentralized anonymous organization source codes for Web3 are publicly available, which makes them susceptible to cyber attacks. In 2016, a decentralized organization called the DAO was hacked and 3.6 million Ethereum was stolen, which resulted in Ethereum splitting into Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Decentralized finance is also a common vessel for fraud. According to Chain Analysis, $14 billion went to illegal addresses in 2021, which is the highest it has ever been, and 79% more than 2020. So what does all this mean for you as a software engineer? Well, first off, Metaverse and Web3 are not the same thing. I see quite a few devs who are learning to build apps for the Metaverse referred to it as Web 3.0, but that is not accurate. Metaverse is a term used to describe immersive digital worlds often experienced through VR. The main connection between the Metaverse and Web3 is that various items in the Metaverse could be NFTs, like your avatar, virtual real estate, and other items. And that's where the similarities end. In fact, Metaverse is being pushed by big tech companies like Facebook and Microsoft, whereas Web3 is a vision of the future of the web that is being championed by decentralized networks, open protocols, and the blockchain. That being said, parts of what make Web3 are already in our daily lives. Things like blockchain, cryptocurrency, and NFTs. With NFTs, content owners have been able to greatly maximize their monetization returns compared to how much they lose to platforms like Facebook and YouTube right now. In addition, as I mentioned earlier, identity in Web3 also works differently compared to traditional authentication protocols that we currently use in Web2, where users don't have to divulge sensitive information like usernames and passwords or email addresses. However, the biggest shift you'll likely see in Web3.0 is the token economy. Web3 enables tokenized economic transactions without intermediaries. It provides a unique set of data, a universal state layer, the immutable ledger, which is collectively managed by a network of untrusted computers. This unique state layer allows us to send digital values in the form of tokens entirely peer-to-peer, -peer, circumventing the double spending problem, where you'd have to pay for goods or service, but then also pay for companies like PayPal or Stripe for their facilitation of the transaction. When you look at this from the economy angle, you can think of Web1 as the information economy Economy, Web2 as the platform economy, and Web3 as the token economy. If you want to read up more about the token economy, I will link an article by Sherman Voshmir in the description below, who does an amazing job at explaining the concepts, far better than I would be able to do. But from a software engineer's perspective, you don't really have to do anything drastic at this point. The exact vision of Web3 will probably never come into fruition, but certain concepts will be gradually adopted and you will need to adapt to it. Consumers will not suddenly stop using sites like Facebook or YouTube or Amazon and adopt a fully new Web3 alternative. But you may see these existing platforms adopt authentication and identity based on Web3. They may enable token-based transactions. They may introduce marketplaces like NFTs that allow users to maximize their content monetization. So as a software engineer, it's just like learning any new library or framework or concept. You aren't going to be outdated or your job isn't suddenly going to be at risk. That being said, the best thing you can do right now as a software engineer is to start reading up and learning the ideas, concepts and technologies and potential economy around Web 3.0. And one great place to start your Web 3.0 journey is Buns, who have also kindly sponsored this video. Buns is a platform to build the on-site chain of decentralized applications super easily by combining modularized smart contacts, even if you don't have specific knowledge of blockchain or Web 3. They provide ready-made contract companies for you to use in your dApp. Some examples include NFT Marketplace, ERC20 Token Marketplace, or a lending service. 
They also support multiple blockchain systems like Ethereum, Polygon, Avalanche, and many more. However, you can not only use modules provided by Buns, but also combine them with a handful of modules developed by smart contract experts. Just like Docker Hub's repository service, you can easily use modules developed by other users. By adopting unique token economics and giving profits back to module creators, they also aim to scale the number of smart contracts libraries to become a highly valuable dApp development platform. Buns provides smart contracts development dashboard via GUI, connection of smart contracts deployed to any UI or front end via SDK, smart contracts functions management via Buns dashboard, functions usage monitoring, smart contracts marketplace, and also smart contracts code edit and customization before deployment via dashboard IDE, which will be releasing soon. And they continue to add more valuable features. So if you're interested in becoming a Web3 developer or simply trying things out, click the link in the description below to get started with Buns. Well, that's all I have for today. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Web3. And while you're here, also check out some of these other videos that I think you'll find useful. Subscribe to this channel for more software engineering content and follow me on Instagram where I do monthly Q&As with my followers. Thanks for staying till the end. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.